Well, firstly, how's Stephen May tracking and uh, what's the latest with him? Yeah, look, Steve's tracking well. Um, you know, clearly we're going to be really cautious with him. You know, we've said two to four weeks and that's the way it'll look. Um, you know, anything to do with the eye, you've got to be cautious with. So um, he'll go through the, the proper concussion protocols, which takes it out to the two weeks. Then we'll get some real good assessment around his eye and, and look at where that sits in terms of his, his return to play. But, um, you know, you speak to Steve, he's in good spirits. You know, he's, he's can to get back into footy as quick as he can. And, um, you know, we'll just get that assessed as we go. I know you flagged it on the weekend, but is Harrison Petty the, the, the replacement? Has he come in as a like for like? Yeah, we looked at that pretty closely. We've got Harrison Petty and Michael Hibbert, and both have pushed their claims incredibly strongly. Um, we'll assess that at training today, but you know, the things we need to take into account when we make those decisions are you know, whether we want to play the three tools in defence or we want to go a little bit smaller and, and get a bit more run and carry off our back half. So. Um, we're going to have a really good look at that at training today and make an assessment later today. How, how impressed were you with Adam Tomlinson's role to go to Hawkins um, after the main injury and, and sort of keep Lever freed up to do what he does? Yeah, look, Tomo's been really impressive. You know, we obviously got him to the club to play on a wing, but his ability to go down back, impact the game, um, win his one-on-ones has been really strong. And his, his job on Hawkins was really, really competitive. And you're right, it enables Jake to continue to play the role that he's playing. So um, Adam's been a big find for us. And, um, you know, to cement his spot in the team and the way he's gone about it in the back half has been sensational for us. Is this as comfortable you've seen Jake in his time at the club and as confident as you've seen him? Because... You know, obviously injury at the start and, and the, the team wasn't going as well, but how have you assessed Jake's first four weeks? Oh, look, he's definitely playing the best footy that he's played at Melbourne. There's no question about that. But I think it's the system of how he's playing and the guys that he's playing with and around, and they've started to build some great cohesion. Um, I've said this a lot. It's probably our most mature area of the ground, and I think the combination of them all playing together has enabled each other's strengths to shine. And Jake's ability to impact the game in the air and on the ground at the moment is very strong. We've heard um, a few grubs from players over the weekend just gone. Um, you know, Petrarca post game stands out as a talking about the midfield and the way the team's playing as a unit. Have you seen sensed the more selfless approach from your midfield this year? And what's gone into that? Do you think? Yeah, I think it's probably more maturity. Um, and we've said this a lot as your team evolves. You get to a core group of players that are playing at the age of 24, 25, where they understand what it takes to be successful and. And one of those things is that real selflessness within the playing group. Um, they understand role, they understand what it takes to be successful. And we're seeing that, you know, Oliver, Petrarca, Viney, you know, Harms, who, who's not there at the moment. You know, they're playing in a way that enables the team to, to build success and they're sharing the load through there. And, um, you know, that's the element of our game and our playing group that's really increased in the last, you know, through the summer and you know, to, to some extent the back end of last season as well. So um, they've made some huge strides, but, you know, it's still very early on and we've got a lot of work to do and um, we'll continue to be challenged to get better uh, as, a, as a footy team. And um, we certainly know what we're up against this week with Hawthorne. You know, they played two of the grand finals from last year um, and just gone down narrowly. They've travelled to Perth and they're playing better footy than what people give them credit for. So. Um, we understand the challenge this week is strong and our midfield will need to be at their best. Um, can I just get an appraisal of you from obviously Ben Brown and Sam Wiedemann last week? They only played a half in the VFL? Yeah, they both, uh, well, Ben played a half and Sam played three quarters. Um, both will play a full game this week. Um, and, you know, speaking to our fitness staff, um, post this week, they'll both be available for selection um, after this game. So, that puts us in a really good position. Now, now, when that gets to that point, then it really comes down to performance. So um, we've spoken to those two guys, you know, whether that's an extra two or three weeks, we're not sure, but we want to get them in really good form to play AFL footy. Now, how long that takes, we're not sure. Um, and then it really comes down to what's the best thing for the, for the team at the time. And, uh, you know, Luke Jackson and Tom McDonald have played some outstanding footy for us at the moment. So, um, you know, they're gonna be hard to move out of the team. That's what I was going to ask next, the way you've opened the season. Does that sort of change the way you approach both Ben and Sam coming to the team and the, the guys that you've got there, as you say? Oh, we're just really open-minded about what our teams looks like. You know, I think one of the challenges at the moment, even though we're winning, is we look at our team and how can we get better? 
And that's on all areas of the ground. That's just not in our forward half. It's right in our midfield and, and also down back. So we're open to what that looks like, whether it's two tools, three tools, you know, Tom McDonald playing on a wing, a whole range of different things and scenarios that will play out in the next two or three weeks that we'll look at, at as a coaching group um, about what's best for our team and how we can actually get better. Does the absence of Stephen May sort of impact that as well in that, as you said, you, might, you can move Tom McDonald to a wing with Adam Tomlinson down back as well? Oh, I think it adds, you know, we've got good depth in all areas of the ground. Um, you know, as I said, you know, Harrison Petty's a emerging tool that we've had on our list for three years now that has missed a bit of footy, but it's in really good form. So um, we've got depth across the ground in all key positions at the moment, which is a great position to be in. As I said, it will come down and be competitive for spots, um, but we'll look at what's best for our footy team. It's a quiet game for James Jordan uh, last week with, I think, only four touches. Is that um, part of the role? It does, he doesn't necessarily get evaluated on how many touches he gets or is his spot in jeopardy? Uh, we don't evaluate a player's game on possession. Um, JJ's been brilliant for us in terms of the role that he's played. Um, he's given us great depth and you know he was a little bit quiet last week um, in terms of his overall touches but you know he also got adjusted in his role around you know with Stephen May going down we moved Angus Brayshaw down back and he played a slightly different position himself so there's little things that take place within games that you know can sometimes impact players roles but you know James will be playing this week. There's obviously a lot of hype around your side at the moment um, for and Sid but how are you keeping a lid on things? Oh, it's really simple for us. We understand and we respect the game and understand how difficult it is. You know, as I said, we're playing a side Hawthorne that are in a lot better form than what people give them credit for and we understand how hard it is. Um, you know, we're, we're pleased with where we sit. We understand there's going to be some hype around how we're playing, but we also want to just take it you know, one week at a time. And, and coaches say that a lot and, and people, and it's just the reality. You can't look too far ahead. Um, you've got to look at what's right in front of you. And, um, we have got a really important game against the Hawks and we'll be going hell-bent to try and get a result there. Just back to the midfield conversation and the players talking about sort of the, the team mentality. Was there times last year you think they might have been a bit ball hunting and, and sort of piped too many bikes chasing the footy as opposed to what you've created this year? Uh, as I said, uh, it, it just comes down to a maturity level about what you're prepared to do for the team. And... Um, that's where it really comes comes from. You know, do I look at last last year and say they were selfish? No. Um, have they increased their ability to be selfless? Yes. Um, and I think that's what the way, what the good teams do. It's not that they're selfish. They they become more selfless and they understand what it takes to be successful. And um, I'm starting to see a group of players within our footy team that are understanding not, not just midfielders right across the board that have got that mindset. Um, which is a great position I've been as a footy club because we have had our challenges. So I think when you go through the adversity side of things, you understand what it look, success can look like for you. And once you get a taste for it, you want it a bit more. So um, we've got to keep our players thinking that way. How important has Adam Marise been to, to take control of that midfield? Look, he's been fantastic since he's come to the club. You know, we've brought in Adam Uze, Mark Williams, um, you know, Greg Staff is doing our forward line. Um, we've brought in a range of different people in different positions throughout our whole footy department. Adam's one of those guys that's had a big impact on our, on our midfield group and um, is coaching him in a, in a really strong way. But I'll continue to say it's the sum of all parts that make clubs and teams operate. It's not one person, it's not one individual that makes a difference. It's a, it's a collective group and you know, I'm really fortunate as a senior coach to have a great group of coaches and also you know, high performance staff, medical team that I'm working with. Cosy gets the headlines with his flashy stuff, but how impressed have you been by Charlie Spargo's start of the year? Yeah, Cosy gets a few headlines, but uh, you know, Spargs, Cosy, um, Alex Neil Bullen, their their pressure inside Ford fifty uh, is been outstanding. So um, they'll share that load, you know, throughout the season. But um, they're working really well as a team within a team and um, creating enormous forward line pressure for us and opportunity inside forward 50. So we're really pleased with Charlie, how he's tracking. Um, he's really a much improved player. I think his ball use is really underrated and, you know, his contest works to a high level. So, you know, he's in really good form, Charlie. I remember chatting to Stephen May in the pre-season talking about the emphasis you'd placed on on creating forward half stoppages, and I, you, sorry, forward half turnovers, and you, you're leading that stat. 
do you almost have to have you almost been surprised a little by the, the way that you've adapted and, and how you're sort of performing in that in that area Oh, look, it's probably something that's been coming for the last 18 months. You know, we really wanted to sure up how we defended. Um, you know, we were too easy to score against at times um, through 19, and, and uh, we wanted to show up how we defended. And obviously the continuity of having a, a back six, but also, you know, the cohesion between May and Lever have enabled us to be more aggressive in our forward half. And, um, you know, the ability to turn the ball over there and be a forward half team is what we've really wanted to become. And... Um, so far, so you know, this season we've been able to do that. But you know, it's not about what just doing that. It's about how you maximise it, and they're the things that we're looking to to really work on moving forward. Fresh extension for Clary this week. How pleased are you with that? And and was there ever a stage over summer when there was murmurs getting around about you know Clary looking elsewhere that you had to to take him aside and, and sort of reassure him of the, the future of the club? Oh, I think it's just brilliant for the footy club, um, Clayton's. He brings a lot of passion and energy to our footy club and we've got a core group of players that they want to play together and they want to build something special together and um, Clayton's one of those guys and there wasn't for one moment that I thought that Clayton was going to leave our footy club. Um, you know, would other clubs be interested in Clayton? Of course they would be, but the, the reality is that Clayton's a Melbourne person. He wants to be a part of this footy club and I know what he wants to create. So um, we're just delighted for us to be able to, to sign Clayton, but also for our supporters. I think it's, uh, it's a great uh, thing for them to, to see and um, he wants to be part of the Melbourne Footy Club. So there's been reports in the last 24 hours that he did meet with Carlton. Were you aware of that and, and did you need to, to seek him out and, and speak to him over summer about where Melbourne was going? No, look, we, uh, I wasn't aware or I've got really no interest in what takes place away from, from Melbourne, really. I uh, <laughs> See this morning. Oh, the joint's on fire, the station's off air. Sorry, something's going on there. I don't know. Um, now, I've actually got zero interest in what takes place away from Melbourne. Um, I'm sure there's a whole heap of clubs that would be interested in Clayton Oliver, as I said, and um, whether he's met with someone or not, it doesn't really interest me. What really interests me is his, his desire to sign and, and stay at Melbourne and, and be a Melbourne person.